finished up at that place and uh, mission successful. So we're back on our way to town and that's the main thing. So um, <clears throat> now uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, everything else going on. Um, tiny house, the, the roof leak under my solar panels. Now that's kind of a really kick in the nads because I didn't do any screwing up there. But I'm now thinking about it. When I had to reattach my strapping to my uh, rain catchment uh, first length of pipe, I did screw into the roof there at that point. But I ensured that I had like I basically, I put silicone down on the area, then I put the strapping down on top of the silicone so it kind of smush everywhere and waterproof it. Then I screwed the screws into the roof through and into the strapping so everything's held. And then I put more silicone on over top and kind of spread it around. So that is the only hole I screwed in and it's 30 year waterproof silicone so I don't know what or where the issue is though again with all that wind and stuff we've had is the vibration of the pipes slowly pulling at that the screws and then the strapping pulling it off of the roof making a hole but the thing is when I went on the roof on the video showing you guys that I looked over there, it was dry as a bone. There's no water over there whatsoever. So I don't think it's that strap. But where the solar panels were, you guys saw how part, part of the tape had curled up and let um, air and moisture go under, kind of underneath the panels. I'm gonna have to fix that in the spring when we get a nice, decent, um, warm day. And then I'm gonna take some of that Either either I get that flex seal stuff like uh, Charles uh, recommended. Um, uh, he said just flex seal the crap out of everything, or um, possibly uh, I may. Oh, well, I already did. I ordered some more of that tape. Um, I didn't order. A, well, I ordered the flex seal tape basically. Um, that way I could try to properly seal up the cracks and crap that broke the tape that broke off kind of so hopefully that solves it um, but other than that that's that's going to be really something to think about but I'm thankful the only thing good about that situation is um, the leak is very small and I'm able to catch it in a bucket and it's a very slow dripping leak so I was I put that bucket full of uh, super absorbent dollar store rags in there for now, and that's kind of what I'm dealing with. So we'll see what happens with that. But you know, it is what it is type of thing. So I'm gonna head back into town. <clears throat> I'm gonna grab some lunch. Then I'm gonna shoot over to my trailer because my parents are actually going going away for the day. Just a little day trip out of town, um, which will be nice for them. And uh, all is good. Um, <laughs> so, um, I gotta give you guys an update on my cousin that I, if you've been following my channel, um, he's doing better. Um, he's back in town. I've been helping out with my aunt and him, uh, doing the best I can to help him through. Because it, it's a, it's not a good time to be sick in the hospital like around Christmas, guys. That's not cool. That's not good. So I'm doing my best to, uh, at least now that I'm off, well, basically off of work now, <clears throat> for the holidays. I just had a quick little stop here, like I'm filming on the, filming on the ride here, but, uh, yeah. So he's doing better. 
<clears throat> everything's good that way. Um, the other relative from the States uh, that was supposed to have their little kind of Christmas meetup or whatever, I don't know if they came down or not. Or they, we were, I guess we weren't, well, we may have been invited, but we never got a phone call for that day, so I think we got screwed. But anyway, we were dealing with my cousin anyway. And <clears throat> he's doing better. He's walking, he's talking, he's showering. He's doing all the usual, you know, he's taking care of himself, basically. But they want to keep him in there, and it's something to do with his blood platelet level. Is at like 175,000, and it should be up around 250 or 200 to 400,000, if I'm, if I, if that's correct. Um, your platelet, your blood platelet level should be up that high. So <clears throat> they're thinking he's he's been diagnosed with something called Evans syndrome, E V A N S syndrome, and they think it's what his dad had, like uh, my uncle, my late uncle there, uh, Mike. Uh, so it might it's probably hereditary. So they're just trying to get him stabilized where his levels are up to snuff, happy for the doctors, and then I, and he's on some kind of like pro, protogen or protogen, um, some weird medical, it's probably like a steroid or some damn thing, I don't know what the hell they get in the hospitals, but uh, that is what's going on, and yeah, not too shabby, so, um, oh, I gotta make a phone call, so I will be back in a second. We'll see you guys in a bit. Alrighty guys, so we're here at the tiny house. Wind turbines are going crazy up there. Excuse me. Um, I'm just finishing my lunch here. And uh, basically today at the tiny house, what I want to do is um, I'm going to try to um, secure that piece of metal, the deflector over the propane stove so it's not it doesn't bounce anymore and makes a ton of noise. So that's the goal for that. And also I want to check in on the tiny house. Because it's actually been a while since I've been here again. Um, because of work, yet again. But the goal now is um, I'm going to check on the water leak. And I'm going to fix the deflector, hopefully. And then I'm going to warm it up in there, obviously. I did not bring the lithium battery today. So my entertainment is less limited <coughs> to probably radio. <laughs> and... Um, what else? Um, just check on things. Make sure nothing else is going on. Uh, plan on shooting a bunch of video. I also want to... Um, I'm going to check my flue pipe for the uh, Cubic Mini Grizzly stove. And the reason I want to do that is it says to check for creosote um, once a month, I guess. But... I'm going to just do it for, uh, since I haven't done it yet, um, so, uh, since doing the upgrades to the, the venting for the Cubic Grizzly, um, I added that little handle on the bottom so I can just crank it, pull it down, and I'll grab the camera and shoot it straight up the pipe to see how bad the creosote is, if at all. And if it's bad, I'll pull out my little brush and we'll do it right here on the outside of the tiny house, which is kind of sweet. Now, I figure I don't get creosote in the horizontal section or the 90-degree piece because it's a small area. There is a ton of heat there, which is um, not, doesn't, uh, when there's a ton of heat, there's no promotion of creosote buildup. So that little section of where it comes right off the stove, turns 90 degrees, goes horizontal and then dumps into the T into my main stack. That little section never got dirty with creosote. And the reason is it gets so hot. 
right? Because it's kind of, um, I'm forcing it to go that direction, which is good though, because all I have to do then is pull the bottom of my T on the stack, and then I can see right up to see if there's creosote, and I can just clean everything from out here, never needing to clean inside that horizontal piece, which is amazing, because that would be a complete nightmare to clean but doable because I can always flex my hose up the T, kind of turn it and jam it in and then go that way and down and pull back. But only if I need to, we'll get there, right? So that's kind of my plan for today, guys. Um, hope you hang around here and check out all the, the messes I'm going to make getting into doing all this stuff. So we'll see you guys in a bit. All right.